I coordinated a number of trips during uh, Secretary of State George Shultz's travel uh, to uh, Africa, to the United Nations in New York. One particularly memorable one was a trip to China in 1986. Um, Shultz uh, was going to visit, hold talks in Beijing, but we stopped first in Hong Kong, and then we entered from the south, and we went to a place uh, called Guilin, a town uh, which is right by the Li River. And the Li River uh, flows down between these limestone mountains. It looks like it's out of a kind of uh, artwork that you'd see on the walls and Chinese buildings, clouds and uh, these limestone peaks and beautiful river running between them and villages. Oh, but the, uh, the problem was that it was the time of year when there wasn't enough water in the river for the riverboat uh, that takes excursions to travel. And so, to show how the Chinese are masters of diplomacy, when they want to send the right message, they open the gates of the dam and allow water to flow down the river, just so Secretary of State George Shultz, their guest, is able to have his trip go down there. It was my second time down the Lee River, um, but it was still magical uh, to, to do that. We then uh, uh, fly up to uh, going to Shanghai. It's on a Saturday and, uh, and, and a weekend, football weekend, and um, Secretary Schultz had a particular football team. He wanted to follow the game. So we have all this communications equipment we would bounce off of two satellites to get back to Washington. And on the train as we're traveling, um, that we set up these dishes and equipment, all oh, the Chinese passengers, look, what is this these you know, foreigners are doing? And uh, well, this communications equipment looked like we were doing something super secret. And then we had back in the operations center in the State Department work for me, I said, get the game on radio, and that, then have an open phone line, put the phone right next to the radio. I go in and hand the other phone to Secretary Schultz, and uh, he's there with the phone up, listening to uh, a football game that he wanted to follow so very much. We get to Beijing, we have all the, the meetings, they go uh, marvelously, and um, the, at the end of the trip, Secretary Schultz, as a special personal gesture, would host a dinner just for the Americans. So all the protocol with the Chinese is done. He'd host an informal dinner and invite the ambassador and his embassy staff, and then all the Americans who worked the trip. So the, the officers, the communication staff, everybody's going to be there. And the secretary would take some of the other more lower ranking people, bring them to his table. So ambassador, whose name was Winston Lord, who was a New Yorker, and I are at another table. And part of my job is to host the ambassador and uh, be nice to him and his other key people. And so we're there talking. And it turns out that he's from New York, the way I had grown up in New York as a young boy. He's a baseball fan. And I say something like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm a baseball fan. I know about the Yankees and this. And I guess I sounded to him like I was saying, sounding like I thought I was some sort of expert. And he turns to me and he said, okay, smart guy, yeah, who was on deck when Bobby Thompson hit his famous home run in 1951 to let the New York Giants beat the Brooklyn Dodgers and play in the World Series. So, for anyone who lives alive in the 50s, it was this incredible sporting moment that everyone talked about. It was called the shot heard round the world. His home run in the ninth inning, the New York Giants are behind, they beat the Dodgers. And He's asking me, who was the guy, not 
Bobby Thompson who hit it, who's the batter waiting, kneeling off to the side for his turn to bat next? I mean, this is really obscure baseball trivia question. And I look at him and I say, oh, it was Willie Mays. Willie Mays was a young rookie at that time who would become one of the most celebrated baseball players of the 20th century, African-American, number 24, say hey, Willie Mays. Well, Ambassador Lord was so stunned that I knew that, that we had a friendship that lasted for another 20 years. And when he was Assistant Secretary of State in the East Asia Bureau and I worked for him, he's the one who fought for me to get to be an ambassador. And I, so when people say, well, how do, you, how do you get to be an ambassador in the State Department? I said, the way I got to is I knew who was on deck when Bobby Thompson hit the shot heard round the world. Not really true, but well, who knows? Maybe, maybe it did play a role. Uh, and it's a great story in any event.